growing up wasn't, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a good thing for me. Uh, it was kind of rough, you know. I was uh, staying in some rough neighborhoods, and uh, at that time, you know, my mom and my dad was off and on, and you know, my dad was uh, actually battling drug addiction, and you know, me, uh, you know, I was chasing pleasure in all the wrong places at that time. You know, being young, being uh, surrounded around negative stuff. And I made a decision to actually uh, become part of a, a local gang. And, you know, my life just took off downhill from there. You know, where I'm from, it's, it's either, it's two things. It's football or, or it's, it's, it's a violent lifestyle. You know, selling drugs, doing drugs. Carrying guns, fighting, just being disrespectful. You know, all those things just left me empty. You know, I got here and you know, I, it was a it was a huge struggle for me, you know, going from not ever leaving Florida to moving all the way to Louisville, Kentucky, uh, just being around new people, being away from family. Uh, people I've been around all my life. But I like every other freshman, you know, that comes on campus, you know, they they're getting acclimated to the new environment. And um, I could tell immediately if Lyle was gonna have some issues with being homesick. You know, everybody was saying, you know, everybody goes through it. And I'm saying in my mind, like, I don't think they're going through it like this. And at the time, I always kept God first, but I kind of veered off the track a little bit. And my priorities kind of, kind of got, you know, out of line. So I remember this practice, him going out and practice is going on. I just remember catching the corner out of my eyes as somebody's leaving the practice field. Nobody leaves the practice field. I remember one day just walking out of practice and one just wanting to go home and wanting to give up on everything and, you know, questioning God, like, if, if it was a reason why you brought me here, why is it so hard for me to go through this right now? And I think God heard that. You know, he was the only one hearing that. And at that time, Chris Morgan came into my life. A lot of times when a young man is going through something or he's having an adversity, sometimes he don't want to come to a coach and the relationship that Chris has, he can go to Chris and he can talk to Chris about this is what's happening with me right now and I, I need someone to talk to. And you know, coach is coaching me and coach ain't really listening to what I have to say, but Chris is that ear for him. Well, I was leaving the practice field, so just something with him, he said, go, go talk with him. So I remember going in the locker room, Blau sat there and he's taking his stuff off. I said, what's going on? And he said, I've had enough, I'm going home. I can't take this anymore. I guess Chris Morgan saw me, I think he was across the field actually. And you know, got into the locker room, he ran me down. And he, and he spoke about the talents being doubled. And the one guy that, you know, that the master gave one talent to, he went and buried it. And he told me basically, he said, Blal, if you leave this campus, you will be burying a talent that God gave you. And you know, man, it opened my eyes and opened my heart uh, to a new perspective, uh, a perspective that I wasn't understanding at that time. The mood changed immediately. I remember him saying, man, if I go back out, coach is gonna make me run. I said, hey, I promise you, if coach makes you run, I'll run with you. In the back of my mind, I'm saying, man, I hope coach doesn't make him run. But I would have ran, because uh, I. he has a talent. Everybody has a talent, and, and we're called to use our talent, not to bury it. And with Blau's, Blau's case, as you can see this year, Blau's been used by God on the field as well as off the field. And I'm glad that he stuck it out. <laughs> 